Okay guys, in this little video segment, we're gonna talk about neutralization reactions and how you can calculate concentrations and amounts based off of some neutralization uh, processes. Um, first thing to recall is that a neutralization reaction it really is just another double displacement reaction uh, that we've already talked about previously this year. Uh, in a neutralization process, you always have an acid reacting with the base and they always make the same two products. They always make some sort of salt and they make some sort of, and they make water. So uh, we use the term a salt here, not salt, because it's not always going to be NaCl. It really is any salt. And in the world of chemistry, the term salt for us means an ionic compound. So uh, usually they say you take an acid plus a base, you produce some sort of ionic compound, and then water with that also. So it really is just double displacement. Uh, here's an example reaction, probably the simplest one that you could possibly see where you have your sodium hydroxide, a very common, very um, well-known uh, strong base reacting with hydrochloric acid. And the salt we make is our table salt, or NaCl, uh, in here. And then our base that we, sorry, the, our other product is water. Now, I wrote it as HOH here um, just because you can see that the hydrogen leaves the chlorine and it switches places with the sodium to make HOH or to make water. Now, in a neutralization reaction, when you put a strong acid and a strong base together, so they're both strong, meaning that they both completely ionize in solution, uh, that neutralization will give you a result of pH of 7. So it's actually truly neutral in terms of putting the two together if you put equal amounts of each substance in. So if you, in this case, if you put one mole of this with one mole of that, you'd end up getting a neutral solution of 7. However, if you don't do equal amounts, you don't completely neutralize, and all you do is shift your pH one way or the other. So in a neutralization reaction between strong acids and bases, we get a pH of 7. Now, if one of your acids or your base is weak, meaning it only partially ionizes in solution, what happens in that scenario is that not all the ions are present to get complete neutralization. So if you use equal amounts of your acid or base in that scenario, you will not get, okay, probably circle this or underline this, you will not produce a neutral solution, okay? Um, that process has to do with something called salt hydrolysis, and it also has to do a little bit with buffers, as we're going to get into later on in this unit. So for now, when you have two strong substances, an acid and base, you get the pH of 7, whereas if one of them is weak, you won't get uh, that process. Um, you actually will be shifted one way or the other as you go through. So we'll spend more details on that later on. We're going to do a little review of our stoichiometry because to do neutralization, you have to be able to go back and do some of that stoichiometry. So um, here's our first little practice problem to review the stoichiometry. You have 10 milliliters, a 0.55 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Um, how many milliliters, a 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid, are needed to neutralize the base? So basically, how do you get them equal? Well, you know your volume. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. So you're solving for basically how many moles. In this case, NaOH and hydrochloric acid, we know from our previous slide, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So for every one mole of NaOH, we need one mole of HCl. And we want to know how many milliliters of 0.25 molar hydrochloric acid are needed to neutralize the base. So we're really going to set up just your basic stoichiometry problem. Um, in these cases, one thing you look for is, remember the capital M is moles per liter. Moles per liter. So the only thing that we really have in our problem to start with that has a single label is milliliters. So you're going to start with the 10 milliliters and then solve for milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Okay? We are not a gas at STP. Um, we have no gases present at all. So we can't use 22.4. We do not have any densities. Density cannot be used here either. We have to use these concentrations to find our ratios. Okay? So take a minute, work through this problem. Just pause the video and finish calculating it, and then we'll come back and uh, we will um, give you the answer key. So here's our answer key. 
We know we have 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. We first had to convert from milliliters to liters. And then we knew the concentration was 0.55 moles per liter, so that's our next step is to cancel liters to go to moles. Our mole ratio is 1 to 1. Uh, keep in mind if you are working with a diprotic acid, uh, this would not be a 1 to 1 ratio, so you'd have to adjust for the balanced chemical equation. We also know that the concentration of the hydrochloric acid was 0.25 molar, so it was 0.25 moles per liter, and then liters back to milliliters again, so you should have gotten 22.0 milliliters of hydrochloric acid for that one. Here's your second review problem. Uh, you have 25 milliliters of 1.5 molar sulfuric acid now. How many grams of KOH are needed to neutralize H2SO4? Okay. Uh, in this case, because we're running a neutralization and because we're reacting it with a strong base, you do get complete ionization of both hydrogen ions. So we can assume that both of those hydrogen, hydrogens ionize. So we don't need to do an ice table. We don't need to do any equilibrium stuff here. Um, just get your chemical equation and make sure you get your correct mole ratio from your balanced chemical equation. Again, let's do some practice on this. And then go ahead and pause the video until you're done. And then I'll give you the answer key. Okay, so first step, make sure we have a balanced chemical equation. We notice now that our mole ratio between sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide is not 1 to 1, it's 1 to 2, so we'll have to factor that in. We have our milliliters of sulfuric acid, again we go to liters, use the concentration, concentration we use moles to moles, so here's that mole ratio, that 2 comes from being a 2 up here. And then the last step was asking for grams, so if you know your moles of KOH, you can solve for your grams of KOH by using the molar mass. So we did to put in 4.2 grams of potassium hydroxide to neutralize that solution. Okay? Practice number three. You find a lab bottle that says nitric acid, but does not give the concentration. You titrate it with sodium hydroxide to find it takes 45 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide to neutralize 25 milliliters of the nitric acid. What is the concentration of the nitric acid? Okay, so we have a new term here called titrate. Uh, what we're going to be doing in the next couple of days is working on titration experiments. Basically, by, it's a process by which you very precisely measure volume when you mix an acid with the base and neutralize them. So when we say you titrate it, it's another way of saying precisely combine two different volumes together. Uh, we'll go through the whole process as part of the little titration video and in-class work tomorrow. Um, so you are going to titrate it. It takes 45 milliliters of that concentration to neutralize that many milliliters of the nitric acid. So now what we need to do is solve for how many moles of nitric acid we have there. We know the volume is there, and then we can take moles divided by liters and solve that one. Okay. So again, work on the problem. Try to solve this. Uh, this is your classic titration type problem that we'll be doing in several labs plus our lab practical. So this is a big a practice problem for you guys to make sure you can do it. And then when you're done, um, turn the video back on, and I'll have the answer key for you guys. So pause it now. Okay, so here we go. If we take a look, we start with the volume of sodium hydroxide that we use, convert to liters, then liters back to moles, because we have a one molar solution, so that's, that's a 1.00. Our mole ratio between nitric acid and sodium hydroxide, because it's a monoprotic acid, just HNO3, is 1 to 1. So that tells us that we had to use, or we had 0 0.045 moles of nitric acid in that solution. Well, we had 25 milliliters of it, and we know molarity is moles per liter. So you take your moles divided by the 0 0.025 liters, because we converted to liters, and the concentration of your nitric acid is 1.8 molar. Okay, so again, this is titrations are a way to find concentrations of unknowns. So it's just another tool for us to determine unknown concentrations in there. Uh, we will have more practice with this type of calculation as we do our titration stuff tomorrow and the future days coming up. Okay, so I'm going to end here because the next slide is on titrations and there's already a video up for you guys to do to look at in terms of what titrations are and how they work. So. Um, the video doesn't necessarily go through these slides, so um, if you
if you want to, the titration slide here and the steps to a titration slide, you can read those as supplemental things for preparing for titrations. Thanks, guys.